Good morning, fellas, and welcome back to Me Plays Games. My name is Matt, and Generation 1 of Pokemon is something else. Glitches, questionable mechanics, weird moves, all sorts of fun stuff. So today, we're going to take a look at some moves that have changed in some ways since Gen 1. There's a part 1 to this video, but the longer I spent on that script, the more weird stuff I remembered, so I set them aside for this part 2. No need to watch the first part, but it'll be linked down in the description if you want to check it out afterwards. Alright, let's get started. Over the years, Game Freak has categorically refused to make good Rock-type moves. Most other types have a handful of strong moves with 100% accuracy. Water-types have Liquidation, Surf, and Scald. Water-types have Liquidation and Surf. Dark-types have Dark Pulse and Crunch. And Rock-types have... Squat. Pretty much every Rock move worth using has a chance to miss. Rock Slide, Rock Tomb, Rock Blast, Stone Edge, blah 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 blah. In Gen 1, Rock Throw was 50 base power and 65% accurate, which makes it an absolutely atrocious move. And it doesn't even have a secondary effect that warrants the low accuracy, it's just completely worthless. There are millions of moves that are stronger, more accurate, and they do something else besides dealing damage. Nowadays, Rock Throw has 90% accuracy, because apparently Game Freak is allergic to 100% accurate Rock moves. Next up, let's take a look at Haze. It's a move that still comes in handy all these years later. It resets the stat stage changes of every Pokémon on the field to zero. So if your opponent uses Sword Stance to boost its attack, you can use Haze to reset it. You might see Toxapex use it in singles to shut down Setup Sweepers, and you might see Murkrow run it in doubles to stop Tatsugiri and Dondozo in their tracks. But in Generation 1, it had an additional effect on top of that. Besides resetting everybody's stats, Haze also cured status conditions for both Pokémon on the field. And it also removed the effects of Focus Energy, Mist, X Accuracy, Leech Seed, Disable, and Screens. This is one of the only ways to thaw out a frozen Pokémon in a Link battle. The only other option is hitting them with a Fire move, other than Fire Spin. Otherwise, if your Pokémon gets frozen, good game, thanks for playing, but that thing's dead, you'll never unfreeze naturally. So in the negative 5% chance your opponent uses Haze on you, count yourself lucky. But it's not all hunky-dory for an unfrozen Pokémon, unfortunately. If you get frozen while recharging from using Hyper Beam, and you get thawed out by Haze, you still can't move or switch out. You retain the recharge state for the rest of the battle. The only thing you can do is sit there while your opponent knocks you out. In Pokemon Yellow, Vaporeon learns Haze and Mist to level 42. Except no it doesn't. This is Gen 1, shenanigans incoming. There's a bug that makes it so that Pokemon can't learn two moves at the same level. The game will only ever ask if you want to teach Vaporeon Haze, then skip over Mist entirely. The only way to get a Mist Vaporeon is by putting it in the daycare. That bug has been fixed, of course, and now learning multiple moves at the same level is relatively common. Bulbasaur gets Poison Powder and Sleep Powder at the same level, and Cast Form gets a bunch of Weather and Elemental moves at the same time at several points. One more fun fact about Haze before we move on. It cures most status conditions in Gen 1, but if you're badly poisoned, Haze just turns it into normal poison, so you'd have to use the move twice to fully cure yourself. Substitute is also a handy status move. The user sacrifices a quarter of its max health to make a Substitute doll that'll take damage in its place. It's had a bunch of applications over the years, including... No, you know what? I'll save how it broke Gen 3 for another video. In Gen 1, Substitutes protected you from direct damage, stats being lowered, and certain status conditions. If you're behind a Substitute, you can't get confused by moves like Confuse Ray. And if you set up the sub while you're already confused, you won't hit yourself or your own Substitute. Nope, the game actually deals the confusion damage to the opponent substitute, even if they don't have one. God, this game is held together by duct tape and a prayer. Speaking of moves that don't work in niche situations, Recover, Soft Boiled, and Rest are all healing moves. And for the most part, they do their job, unless you have the wrong amount of HP. And no, I don't just mean gym leaders trying to heal a Pokémon that's already at full health. Because of a glitch, if your current health is either 255 or 511 less than your max health, you're not able to heal. The moves will just fail. And a lot of Pokémon run some kind of recovery move, so it's something you have to be careful of. Since the amount of damage moves deal is slightly random, this isn't really something you can intentionally aim to take advantage of. Unless you use a level 85 Chansey. Chansey can learn the set damage move Seismic Toss, a move that does damage equal to your level. 85 times 3 is 255, so by using Seismic Toss 3 times, you can lock your opponent out of healing, because you'll have done exactly 255 damage. Is it a strategy worth using? Nope, not really, but it exists, and I think it's pretty neat in theory. But when everything around you is level 100, including the Chansey your opponent also probably has, making your Chansey weaker for this niche strat really isn't worth it. 
There are four moves that change types between Gens 1 and 2. Karate Chop, Gust, Sand Attack, and Bite were all normal type in Gen 1. But with the release of Gold and Silver, they became Fighting, Flying, Ground, and Dark respectively. Bite is especially interesting because before Gen 4, a move's category, in other words whether it was physical or special, was dictated by what type it was. So for example, all Fighting moves were physical, and all Psychic moves were special. Normal moves were also physical back then, but Dark moves were special. So when Bite changed types, it also changed damage categories. And it ended up changing categories a second time in Gen 4, because of the physical special split. Now the damage categories are assigned to individual moves instead of types. Now you can have a special fighting move like Aura Sphere, or a physical psychic move like Zen Headbutt. And Bite became a physical move once again, making it the only move to change damage categories twice. Next, let's look at a move that could bring Pokemon Red and Blue to a screeching halt, Rage. It's a 20 base power move, which isn't that strong, and it doesn't get much better. Every time you get hit by an attack or disable, your attack stat gets boosted by one stage. But when you're using a 20 power move, that's not really doing you many favors. Even if you max out your attack at plus 6, Rage will have an effective power of 80. You know what move is stronger than that? Body Slam, and it doesn't require a million turns of setup. But wait, it gets worse. Once you start using Rage, you can't stop. You're locked into the move until you win the battle or faint, and you only use up one power point the entire time, so you'll never be forced to use Struggle. Under the right circumstances, you can set up a battle where it's not possible to win or faint, making it effectively endless. Many trainers in the game have what's known as good AI, which causes them to use moves of types that are super effective against you, if they have them of course. Thing is, they don't actually check if the move they're using does any damage or not, so if you bring a Fighting or Poison type to a battle, and the trainer knows a Psychic type status move like Rest, that's all they'll ever use, assuming they don't know any super effective attacking moves. So by bringing a low level Poison or Fighting type Pokemon like Mankey or Coughing to the Elite Four, you can break the Lorelei fight by using Rage. Her first Pokemon, Dugong, knows Rest, which fully heals it and puts it to sleep for two turns. Because of good AI, Lorelei thinks the move is super effective against Poison and Fighting, so that's the only move she'll ever tell Dugong to use. A weak Mankey with Rage will never do enough damage to knock out Dugong, before it wakes up and uses Rest again. And AI Pokemon don't have power points, so she can spam Rest literally forever. Like I said, once you start using Rage, it'll keep going forever, without using up extra power points, so you'll never run out of them either. Since you can't do enough damage to knock out Dugong, it keeps healing off all the damage, and neither of you can run out of power points, it's effectively impossible to win or lose this battle. So if you save in Lorelei's room before the fight, you're gonna be there a while. Lorelei was given new AI in Pokemon Yellow to prevent the soft lock, and Rage was completely overhauled in Gen 2. Now you can switch to a different move at any time, and it consumes a power point each time you use it. Instead of boosting your attack stat, Rage had a separate counter that made it stronger each time you use it in a row. And then it went right back to raising your attack stat in Gen 3. Weird move. Generation 1 introduced three one-hit KO moves, Guillotine, Fissure, and Horn Drill. They worked a little differently in Gen 1 compared to nowadays, though. In later games, the accuracy of these moves depends on the user and target's levels. If the user is a lower level than the target, the move will automatically fail. If they're the same level, they have 30% accuracy, and if the user's level is higher, it gains another 1% accuracy for every level they have over the target. So if you're level 35 and you try to hit a level 20, Fissure will have 45% accuracy, because that's the base percentage of 30, plus the 15 level advantage. But in Gen 1, the moves had a flat accuracy of 30%. Eh, sort of. Whether they hit or not depends on both Pokemon's speed stats. If you're slower than your target, the moves will never hit, but if you're faster, they have 30% accuracy. In Generation 1 only, the moves knock the target out by doing a flat 65,535 damage, which seems kinda overkill because Chansey is the fattest Pokemon in the game, and it can only have up to 703 health, but sure, why not? In Part 1, I talked about how moves like Bide, Seismic Toss, and Nightshade ignored type immunities, because in Gen 1, they only apply to moves that follow the standard damage formula. Well, one-hit KO moves are an exception. Hordrill and Guillotine don't hit Ghost types in Gen 1, and Fissure doesn't hit Flying types. In a playthrough, you can use the X Accuracy item to guarantee these one-shot moves hit, since in Gens 1 and 2, the item makes your moves ignore accuracy checks altogether. So Gen 1 speedrunners use X Accuracies and spam Horn Drill with Neo King for select fights throughout the game. Since Horn Drill only has 5 power points, it's not something you can use for every battle. This also doesn't work at all nowadays, since the move simply boosts your accuracy by 1 stage in Gens 3 to 6, and 2 stages since Gen 7. Oh, also, one shot moves ignore accuracy modifiers entirely now. They're not affected by X Accuracy, Sand Attack, Double Team, any of that stuff. The only thing that affects their accuracy today is the level difference. 
Nowadays, each Pokémon has six different stats. HP, Attack, Defense, Special Attack, Special Defense, and Speed. But back in Gen 1, Special Attack and Special Defense were both rolled up into one special stat. That meant Pokémon dealt special damage, just as well as they could take special hits in return. Nowadays, Chansey doesn't run traditional attacking moves, on account of its attacking stats being, you know, awful. But in Gen 1, its special stat was 105, so it could actually do pretty significant damage with Thunderbolt and Ice Beam. In Gen 2, 105 became a special defense stat, and a special attack became 35. So now if it's going to deal direct damage, its best option is Seismic Toss. But another side effect of having one stat for special attack and defense is really powerful boosting moves. In modern games, growth boosts your special attack by one stage, but in Gen 1 it boosts your special instead, effectively making it equivalent to Calm Mind today. Similarly, Amnesia now boosts your special defense stat by two stages, but in Gen 1 it boosted your special by two stages. So you basically got the modern day Amnesia boost on top of Nasty Plot, which is absolutely ridiculous. And you know what Pokémon can learn Amnesia? Oh, you know, just Mewtwo, which is already the strongest Pokémon in the game, no big deal. Yeah, this thing's a beast, its stats were off the charts, and it could use Amnesia to boost them even further. Between its incredible stats, move pool, and typing, Mewtwo was the first Pokémon to be banned from standard play. It single-handedly created the Ubers tier, where all the legendaries that are too strong for OU hang out today. Well, most of the legendaries, plus some Megas, and Dracovish, and Aegislash for a couple generations, and about a million Pokémon in Gen 9, Power Creep is fun! Low Kick was completely overhauled between Gens 2 and 3. Nowadays, it's a 100% accurate fighting move, and its power depends on the target's weight, maxing out at 120 for Pokémon that weigh at least 200 kilograms, or about 441 pounds. But in Generations 1 and 2, it was, uh, bad. It was a flat 50 power, and 90% accurate. It has a 30% chance to flinch, but nowadays there are moves with the same flinch chance, but they're also stronger and more accurate. So Low Kick was, uh, how do I put this nicely? Bad. Alright, that'll do it for this video. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this, and leave a comment with anything else you'd like to see me talk about. I'll see you all next time. Good night, fellas. Sleep well.